I'm Realtor Deb Tomorrow, and this is At Home in Bloomington, brought to you by Karen Russell, Ruoff Home Mortgage. We profile the people, places, and resources that make Bloomington Bloomington and help you live your best life at home in Bloomington. Hello and welcome to At Home in Bloomington. I'm your host, Realtor Deb Tomorrow, joined as usual by the lovely Miss Karen Rastel, who is the best name lender in the state of Indiana. Hello, Karen. Hey, Deb. Karen's with Ruoff Home Mortgage, what are, and she is our show sponsor, so thank you for that. And uh, I always, I feel like we should, I don't know, do this on video, make it live. Oh my gosh, could you imagine? No, you no. did that to me once. Not today. But, okay, oh, and I oh, know, I did record you, yeah, on video once, but yeah. Okay, I am going to quiz you, and I know you're dreading this. I know. Because you felt like the last time I quizzed you, you didn't do well. Not a good test taker. But um, you may know more about this place than I do. Okay. Because I don't know if you've been there or not. I'm going to probably say not, because I'm like 0 for, 0 for 50. Like 50 guys, I'm 0 for 50. Okay. Okay. Um, but I've never been there. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to say a phrase or a couple of words that are going to be clues to the place that we're talking about. Okay. Okay, so your points, you get points. All right. I don't know what you're going to do with them, but you get points. Okay. I'll, I'll catch them in for snark bucks. Snark bucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell people what that is. Um, okay, so for 10 points, your clue is viscosity tube. Oh, pass. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I know, but viscosity is the best word. Okay. I love you. I, I find a way to use the word viscous or viscosity almost every day. Yeah, you're fancier than me. Well, so. you know. Okay. I'm sure I don't use it right, but okay. For eight points, strobe drops. I can't even. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even venture? No. Okay. I'm trying to put these, these clues together. Okay, so. let's bring this back into Karen's world a little bit. For okay. five points, beers and brews. Beers and brews. Not bruises and I punch you, you bruise, but bruises. Okay. Like beers and brews. Five points. Okay. Viscosity tube, strobe drops, beers and brews. I don't know what those are. I know what beers and brews are. Okay. Yeah. Three points. Yes. Wonder Garden. That sounds pleasant. But... <laughs> 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 that sounds very delightful, but I've no, no no clue. No. All right, for one point, come on, bring it home. You can do it. Museum. Mm -hmm. Viscosity tube. No. Strobe drops. Beers and brews. Wonder garden. Museum. Ah, wonder lab. There you go. <laughs> It's only because of the emphasis of Wonder Lab. Wonder Lab. Or the technical so. name, Wonder Lab, the Museum of Science, Health, and Technology. So we welcome two guests today, Emmy Brockman, who is the Education Director at Wonder Lab, and Sarah Lynn Wells, who is the Educator, uh, Adult and Secondary, or Museum Educator, Adult and Secondary Education. So welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank All right. Did I, did I killed about three minutes with that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would go a little quicker. I thought you'd have some good guesses. No. Viscosity if you would have tea. said, what did you have to, how did you fulfill your physics requirement while you were at IU? Uh, I would have been like, at Wonder Lab. How did so, you do that? Yeah, Tell at us. Wonder Lab. Like, did you go and like it's volunteer? Been a while. Yes. Yes. Wonder Lab had just started, I think. I'm sure we'll kind of get into that. It's mm -hmm. been a, it's been a blink of an eye since I was in college. Yeah. But yeah, it was uh, something new. And my professor was, I think, one of the founding uh, members. Was of it Kathy Omar? Omar? Yes, it was. She's the best. Awesome. She is. She doesn't, doesn't remember me. I try to stay low on the radar. <laughs> I do with most things. Sit in the back. Uh, but yeah, I learned how to calculate like my electric bill or something in that class. So anyways. interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. So I know a lot of people have kids and they've been to Wonder Lab. Um, and if that is who is listening, don't tune us out because we're going to talk about Wonder Lab for kids, but we're also going to talk about Wonder Lab for adults. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's going to be the most um, interesting. Also, here's a little like uh, what you call it, um, foreshadowing, deal of the century. I'm telling you, I have discovered the deal. I I'm going to call it right now. This is the deal of 2019. We're going to get to that okay. here a little bit later in the episode, so you got to okay. listen, because it is literally, I mean, your husband, mm -hmm. Karen, Mr. Rain Man, yeah. Mr. yeah, Mr. Spreadsheet Budget yes. is going to go crazy for this deal. All right. Okay? I'm keeping a note for myself to make sure that you discuss this 
really, really big deal. Deal of the century. All right. Yeah. Hey, let's talk to our guests. What do you okay. Think? Okay. So welcome. What is Wonder Lab for anybody who's maybe from out of the area or has no idea or is, you know, living under a rock? Wonder Lab's the best place to learn what viscosity means. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> They have a viscosity tube. Okay. Is that the one with the bubbles? The I, have air? No idea. I don't even know. It's 100% the one with okay. the bubbles. Okay. <laughs> you you would have said, yes. Yeah. See, I would, said, I would like, give you a passing grade. You need to break it down like bubbles, and I would have been like, yay, bubbles. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so not only do we have bubbles, we're a hands on science museum. Um, we're dedicated to, you know, in, using creativity and curiosity about science to educate and we educate people from birth all the way up to adults and yeah and that's the thing i noticed when i was like going through your website and some of the materials and doing some of my research that it feels to me as someone who doesn't have children that you're kind of going and adults yeah you too yes. <laughs> like you kept kind of reaching out and um you know one of the reasons i've never been to wonder lab it's because i felt like if i didn't show up with some kids in tow i'd be looked at like a creeper <laughs> And so I'm hoping that at the end of this show, well, uh, even if you don't have kids, we'll feel more comfortable going in there and learning about viscosity tubes, mm -hmm. or as Karen calls them, bubbles. Yeah. I guess we think learning never stops at any age. It's for everyone who wants to come and learn and experience the museum. That's a that's a great point. Um, on, I thought this was interesting too. In my research, I it came up that Wonder Lab is number th the number three thing to do on TripAdvisor in Bloomington, right? But not really, because number one is IU. IU is not a thing to do, <laughs> right? I mean, you're not like, hey, kids, let's go to IU today. Didn't really, I mean, wander on campus or whatever, right? Number two is Oliver Winery. So, you know, fire, that's fine, whatever. Not so great if you have kids. So really, Wonder Lab's number one. Yeah, I mean, we are basically. number one. Like, yeah, we are number <laughs> exactly. But I also <laughs> think, too, it's like the only one, it's like the closest science museum in some, like, crazy mile radius. I mean, that's what I remember hearing Um Back in, this yes, is dedicated my, to science because I think people yes. try to compare it to the Children's Museum and they're a little bit different because I think the Children's Museum, it does have science components, but it also, you know, has a lot of other things too. And this is really dedicated to science. Yeah. And because we're a little further south, we're serving a lot of communities and um, counties mm -hmm. that wouldn't otherwise have access to this sort of yeah. science. Not quite run up to Children's Museum for the day kind of thing yeah. when you're Southern India. So tell us a little bit about the history because I was surprised to learn that it started way back in 1995. I don't know. In my mind, it's a new thing. Is it? I it's mean, that's it. relatively new, I guess. I guess, in the sense of, of other things. Yeah. We just had our 21st birthday. Wonder Lab can legally drink. Sweet! <laughs> We're going to get back to that, too, exactly. aren't we? Yeah, so it started... Um, and you kind of were in right at the beginning, really. Mm -hmm. So it started out in the physics department as just an outreach component by a group of women in the community who saw an opportunity to do more science outreach in a hands-on way and it wasn't happening. Um, schools didn't have the resources to teach science always or the support, that's still the case. And so Wonder Lab sort of came in to fill that void, to offer programming, to get people excited about science. And so we started in an interim space right on the square, and I think we were there for maybe like four or five years, mm -hmm. and then it moved into its current space in 2003, Yeah, um, and then been growing and expanding, adding new exhibits and programs since then. And you guys are in an amazing location, and I don't know if they knew back in 2003 that the Beeline was going to run right next to the building. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, it's so that true. was pretty awesome. So tell everyone where you're located. So we're right on 4th Street next to the Beeline. So, you know, as you're traversing, you see us there. I think the first thing you see is the garden. Okay. The oh, if you're garden. going down the Beeline, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the Wonder Garden. The Wonder the Garden. Yeah. Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> the Wonder Garden. Uh, and since that, uh, I read that since you moved into the current building, you've had like a million visitors or something crazy like yeah, that. Yeah, more so, than a million. I mean, that's insane when you consider the size of the town. So um, that's very impressive. Um, so talk to me a little bit about more about your educational philosophy and, and how you're sort of approaching things. Yeah. Do you want to yeah. 
So we, as you mentioned, um, it's important to us for the learning to never stop. So as Amy mentioned, we have things from babies all the way through adults. And it's just important for us to be able to give people a place to go, especially if you're out of school, maybe you're not um, actively being able to learn about science, but a place where you can go and learn more about the world around you. Um, we find it very important to be able to expose people to accurate facts, um, actual tools that they would use, and an opportunity to meet other STEM professionals, whether it's people that are working in the museum or people that are brought in for various events. We like to have people that are working um, in those fields professionally, an opportunity for you to be able to meet them and learn from them. Um, we have uh, obviously being a museum, an important part with our younger audience is meaningful play and hands-on learning. So it's all about going in and exploring the world around them in the museum and learning through play. So even down to our toddlers and babies can go and they're learning as they're exploring and experiencing things in the museum. And I would add too, like adults need to play, yes. right? We forget that, right? <laughs> we, had, we had a work event inside is at your current location mm -hmm. we had a, an after hours work event we had a day of caring this was several years ago i want to say maybe 90 90 i don't anyways we had a day of caring and we went out and volunteered and then afterwards the event was we were going to wonder lab and i climbed that yes. that vine <laughs> and i'm scared of heights <laughs> i'm scared of small no, spaces tell me, what, what is this vine? i've never been in there you gotta tell me what this vine is I think it was donated by the uh, Olive Winery. Mm -hmm. It is a. It goes from uh, the main level uh -huh. up to the upstairs, uh -huh. and it's a. They look like little leaves, but it's an enclosed okay uh, vine that okay. kids can crawl. Take your shoes off, and you crawl up in there, and it's so just all like nutrients. You're a nutrient traveling up yes, and down the vine. Yes. Is that where yeah, you're going? Yes. Oh man, xylem flow. Yes, I think there you go. I get ten points. And so then, of course, like nobody wants to be a quitter, so you have to go all the way to the top. But the spaces in between get a little tricky, mm -hmm. and yeah. Then I was up there, and I'm like, okay, now i got to figure out how to get down. Yeah. <laughs> May I ask so. how many glasses of wine prior to vine climbing? That was zero. Really? Yeah, it was, a work, it was a work thing. Sometimes it takes one or two to help <laughs> Now, <laughs> afterwards, it was like, oh, my gosh, I need something after that. It's like climbing the rope and gym glass, yeah. right? So... Um, so you've talked about you've got all age ranges. So what are the kinds of things, like if someone's got a little, 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 little one toddler? Yeah, I can speak to that. That's a lot of what I do. So we have classes starting from birth, basically. And the classes are really, we're trying to do things that infants and toddlers are interested in. So there's a ton of music. Mm -hmm. So every week I'll write a song about like, this is the way your liver works. Your liver works. <laughs> <laughs> and kids are learning language, right? They're yeah. sopping it up all the yeah. time. So I try to use real big science words. Yeah. Because a toddler has no it's idea. A song with viscous in it? I should. Next week. Viscous. <laughs> <It's got laughs> how think. sticky it can be. There you go. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like... I would say the word the like cumulonimbus or viscosity. Yeah. They don't know that that's more complicated right. than watermelon or toilet seat. You know, right. like, <laughs> they need to learn and have science be like a real part of their learning from Interesting. birth. So we have the classes and then starting in next fall, we're opening a portion of the museum. It's especially for infants and toddlers because, you know, they're so tiny. They yeah. get trampled yeah. with really specific They're not climbing the vine. Needs. Right. No, <laughs> they are not. <laughs> it's been a while since I've been in there, but I, I think the last time I was in there, the vine was right next to the, the, to the like, preschool section. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was like, and I would just sit and watch, um, and when my son would go running around, I'm like, oh, those poor little babies are going to get hurt. Like, someone's going to step on them as they yeah, run exactly. by. But. So we're trying to, to give them their, their special zone. So that's like that's what we do starting with birth. And though that's for the kids. It's also for the parents, too. Mm -hmm. I always sprinkle in, you know, your child's brain is developing in this way. That's why we use this kind of vocabulary. Your child is learning about object permanence. That's why peekaboo is interesting. Because we're scientists, mm -hmm. we like to like bring learning into all of these different kinds of opportunities. Interesting. They're a lot of fun. It was actually my introduction to Wonder Lab. I oh, took yeah. my son when he turned one. I started taking him to the class. Okay. And I just loved it so much. We kept coming back. So, awesome. Yeah. And then I know I've seen some other activities. I mean, there's a million activities there, so I'm not really even sure where to start. But I saw one that I thought was kind of fun. Um, I, 
on Facebook, somebody had posted that the kids will go in and they'll get a prompt and they'll get some like things and then they have to sort of come up, make a solution or create something, sort of an engineering kind of thing. So it it is very interactive if you've never been there. And I think they do a great job of keeping your kid entertained. And, mm-hmm. uh, and that's sure. a program that happens every week, Saturday, oh, okay. Sunday. And I think, you know, in life, we're so afraid of failing. Yeah. So the idea with that is you get some sort of challenge that's like legitimately challenging. And so you have to try like a hundred times to get it to work, but you learn this like perseverance. Yeah. And then you find a unique solution that's all your own. Yeah. And then, you know, you know what it's like to be an engineer. Interesting. I feel like I could use that training. Yes. I'm going to take you to Wonder Lab <laughs> without my kids. Like, we're just going to go in there. Just you and me in Wonder Lab. I'll be <laughs> they're gonna, to see they're going to be like, like nine one. Like, one. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, let's see. Should I share the world's greatest deal now no, or should I do I that after break? After break. Okay. So take me on um, uh, what some other exhibits that you want to talk about at Wonder Lab. The bubbles are, are always very popular, as you were talking yeah. about earlier with the viscosity too. Yeah. <laughs> and there's lots of different. We have a somewhat newer um, exhibit that came a couple months ago with um, making giant bubbles, all sorts of things with bubbles that are popular. Fun. And do your exhibits change? Are they the same all the time? They're always changing, so okay. we're always adding new things. We added a couple new bubble exhibits recently. We added... It's been it's been about a year, but we've been adding new details to our coral reef exhibit. And I love that. Like as an employee, yes. if I ever need to yeah. chill out, sure, just, like, watch the fish. There's <laughs> always something interesting happening. That took me by surprise. Again, having not been in there, <laughs> when I was going through the internet or going through your website, and I was like, wait a minute, they have like live animals there. I had yeah. no idea. Mm-hmm. So you've got a whole coral reef life kind of. I kind of want to go. How do you I'll guys take feel? you. I'll take you yeah. there. The the that was the one thing I had the very first time during my course that when I went to Wonder Lab, I was in charge of the um the 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 ones that don't hurt you, but the, the big, giant hissing cockroaches. Yes, that's what I was going to ask. <laughs> yes, and I was, I was not okay, <laughs> but you know. You had to be okay because there's kids there and you had to be like super excited. And it's like, did you want to touch one? And then you had to reach in there and get one out. And then, uh, yeah. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I can't think of what they're, they start with an M. Mm-hmm. Madagascar See? hissing cockroaches. I remember some of it. See? Yeah. And then when I was done, I was like, okay, I'll, I'm going to, I'm going to like volunteer for like another area. There was no way. Don't put me with the reptiles because then I get in some trouble because I'm scared of that stuff. But yeah. I'm they're impressed. this big. Wow, they're that's like, like what that? three inches maybe? Three yeah, four inches. Oh, big. Yeah, they're amazing, and they make sound. And there's more than one, so it sounds like a yeah. whole cacophony. Just, sure. Yeah, that's <laughs> good sure. word to There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's take a break. When we come back. We'll talk about the deal of the century, and we'll also talk about some of the awesome things that are going on at Wonder Lab specifically for adults so Karen and I can go in and not frighten all the children necessarily, <laughs> but still partake of uh, all the wonder at Wonder Lab. So stick around. You're at home in Bloomington. Hi, this is Karen Rastel with Ruoff Home Mortgage. Did you know we are on the cutting edge of technology when it comes to applying for a mortgage? Loan Butler was created with you in mind. It's a fast, convenient, and secure way to apply online for a mortgage loan. It reduces the amount of paperwork and time for you. Save a tree and contact me today at 812-606-7653 for more details. Ruoff Home Mortgage is an Indiana corporation licensed by the Indiana Department of Financial Institutions. This is not an offer for extension of credit or a commitment to lend. All loans must satisfy company underwriting guidelines, equal housing lender, NMLS number 141868. This is your Real Estate Realist, practical advice on buying and selling real estate based on my experience closing over 800 home sales. Raise your hands. How many of you know how a lender comes up with how much house you can afford? We all know they ask for tons of paperwork and documentation, but just how do they come up with the price of a home you can buy? Before I was a realtor a million years ago, I thought it was some factor of your income, like two or three times your annual income, but I was wrong. So here's the real scoop. First of all, your lender evaluates your debt to income ratio. This is looking at your monthly income before taxes compared to how much debt you currently have. That's things like car payments, credit card payments, student loans, even if they're in deferment or forbearance, and other kinds of revolving debt. 
Mortgage rules specify the amount of debt you are allowed to carry as a percentage of your income. So some loans allow 35%, some loans allow 45%, but the number varies. A lender looks at the maximum amount of debt you can carry based on your loan type. It subtracts out your current debt and whatever is left is what is allowable for your monthly mortgage payment. Don't worry though, your credit score does come into play. Now that your lender has a monthly mortgage payment amount, they work backwards into a purchase price. The better your credit score, the more home you can qualify for. Because your credit score determines your interest rate as well as other costs associated with your mortgage. The third thing a lender looks at is how much down payment you have. So that's an important thing to know up front when getting pre-qualified. Down payments can be as little as zero, and down payments can even be gift money, but the more you have, the more house you can afford. Taking all of these things into consideration, a few moments of magic math later, your lender will tell you what you can qualify for. A great lender, like Ad Home and Bloomington sponsor Karen Rastel of Ruoff Home Mortgage, will take the time to show you the numbers and help you understand the math. For more information on pre-qualifying for a mortgage, check out my Real Real Estate Today podcast, episode 83. You can find it on iTunes, my YouTube channel, and at www.athomeinbloomington.com. My name is Donna, and my realtor is Deb Tomorrow. When it comes time to buy or sell a home, she is the obvious choice. Deb is not your average realtor. She stands beside you all the way, before, during, and after your real estate transactions. Deb is passionate about real estate and it shows. So just do it. Choose Deb. Now back to the show. Welcome back to At Home in Bloomington. Before we get back to our guest from the Wonder Lab, we have our Facebook follow segment. And in this episode's Facebook follow, we're going to throw back to episode two of At Home in Bloomington, which was with Jeff Grant, one of the owners of Hopscotch Coffee. Yeah. So here's what I discovered. And I will tell you, I, I map quest this. I pulled it up and I map quested it. If you were to design, follow me here, mm-hmm. a Bermuda Triangle of coffee, hot cocoa, and pastries in Bloomington. Triangle. Okay. Draw a line from each of the two hopscotch locations and Rainbow Bakery. Right? You got a little triangle? Mm-hmm. Smack dab in the middle of that is Wonder Lab. Is Wonder Lab. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So hopscotch is a perfect way to cap off a trip to Wonder Lab. And the three, all three locations, Rainbow Bakery and the two hopscotches, are all within like two to four blocks mm-hmm. of uh, of Wonder Lab. So follow them on Facebook and listen to our chat with owner Jeff Grant on episode two of At Home in Bloomington. Best part is you can walk out of Wonder Lab. You don't really even need to know which way you're walking. Just start walking. You'll hit one of them. <laughs> it's right there. So okay, so um, membership. I want to talk about membership because I think you guys have an interesting philosophy and this is where the deal of the century is going to come up too. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys know that you're the deal of the century. Do you know that? I don't know that. Deal of the century. I mean, I, sus- I suspect it. Yes. Okay. So, um, one of the things I really liked about your membership options is that you've got a lot of different ones. Mm-hmm. Um, can you talk, do you, are you able to talk about the philosophy kind of behind the membership? I know you're not membership specialty, but yeah, so I can't so much speak to the, the pricing and all yeah. of that, but from an education standpoint, we want to have as much access as possible, right? So when you have a membership, not only do you get into the museum free, but you get into almost all of our programs for free as well. And if the programs aren't free, then members usually have a discount. So our adult programs, members have discounts, our special animal programs as well. And the more, from from a learning perspective, right, the more you are able to reinforce a scientific idea. Like if I woke you up every morning and I said, viscosity, 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 <laughs> you would definitely understand it, right. you know, at a certain point. Right. So if you get the chance to come back over and over again, which the membership allows you mm-hmm. to do, then that learning builds on itself and it becomes, you know, mm-hmm. a bigger part of your life. Right. And we were talking over the break about misconceptions about how like my misconception was if I went in there without kids, I would look like a creeper. Mm -hmm. But I think there's also a misconception that it's a one and done. Once you go, then you've kind of done it all. And and so what you're saying, what I'm hearing is, you know, you should be going back and visiting on a regular basis um, so that you can reinforce, even if it's visiting the same Uh, exhibit, you're going to learn something new or reinforce something, um, which is important for kids. You have a different experience every time. There's so much to see. Even if you're not doing a program, you're just visiting the exhibit. I feel like there's something different you can do each time and learn from before. Yeah. 
Well, one of the things that I learned about the, that I want to talk about on membership and it's on your website, but the different levels is that the way that you all define a household for a family membership isn't sort of the traditional, like you all live under one roof. You can name people to be part of your household. And I thought this was great because we have a lot of retirees. They have a grandparent account or a grandparent membership where you can name your grandchildren. You can bring friends of the grandchildren so you can be the cool grandparent. Um, <laughs> but you can name caregivers and, uh, you know, if you've got a nanny or, uh, you know, a family friend who spends a lot of time with the kids. So you can kind of define what your family is um, and take full advantage of that membership. And I thought that was really cool um, because you guys are recognizing that, you know, family isn't just, you know, there isn't just one shape and size and form of family. But here's the deal of the century. Ready? Um, I need a drum roll. I know, right? I need sound effects here. There you go. Thank you. So you also get, when you, with your membership to Wonder Lab, you get free admission to other member organizations. Um, there's a thing, and I... No, oh, did I write it down? I didn't write it down. ASTC, I think, which is like Association of Science and Technology Centers. I'm making that Perfect. up. But okay. Exactly. So <laughs> science museums um, all over the world, not just the not just the US, but there are there's a list. I believe it was uh, 12, 21 pages. I don't know. There were a bunch of them. So just as an example, I did the math. Because this is how excited I was. <laughs> so um, because I was like, oh, I wonder what they have, like, say, in Illinois. Mm -hmm. So say you're going to take a little family weekend to Chicago, right? What do you do when you take your kids to Chicago? <laughs> go to the Space and... You go to the Science and Industry yeah, Museum. And industry and you go to the Adler Planetarium. <laughs> and you go to the Field Museum, which I have to say, when I was young, my mouth, my father told me, we're going to the Field Museum. They have stuffed animals. And I was envisioning <laughs> stuffed animals. And was appalled when I got there. And they were not the kind of stuffed animals. I remember that to this day. Anyways, I have a little therapy. I'm better now. Okay. So if you were to go family of four, two adults, two kids, and you went to those three museums. We did that back in about five years ago. Mm -hmm. I'd have to ask Rain Man to pull up that spreadsheet. but I have it right here, okay? I'm telling you. Science and Industry Museum is $22 for adults, 11 bucks for kids. Mm -hmm. The Adler Planetarium is $25 for adults, 20 bucks for kids. Mm -hmm. And the Field Museum is $24 for adults and 17 for kids. Now, this is just general admission. They have, you know, you pay extra for extra, you know, exhibits mm -hmm. and things like that, right? All of that added together for a family of four is $238. That's a lot of money, right? Mm -hmm. One-year family membership at Wonder Lab, 108 that's it. One year. Two years is $201. Stop. Is that not the deal Stop. of the century? That is the deal of the century. That is the deal of the century. So you don't even have to go to Wonder Lab. You should go to Wonder Lab. But even if you just bought the membership, because you were taking a weekend trip to Chicago with your kids, you would save $130. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Also, because I had to double check, because one of my favorite science museums in the world is the NASA Space Center in Houston. That's on the list. Oh, is it? You can yeah. get into that. Yeah, we went to the Space Center in Huntsville yeah. with my family last summer. We yeah. were going to the beach, and we stopped there. We were able yeah. to get in for free. Yeah, it's a really great Amazing deal. Amazing deal. So think about that when you're uh, you know, taking it all into account. with, with all. Also, another fun fact, maybe not quite the amazing deal, but it's still a good deal, too. Wonder Lab members get discounts on Cardinal Stage tickets. Mm -hmm. So there's some nice little perks like that, too. Yeah. Discount in the gift store as well. Yep. Yeah. And probably at a lot of other gift stores in associated yeah. museums. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So there you go. Deal of century. I'm giving it to all of you. I was just thinking of the, you know, because the gift, the, the gift shop is at the end or like when you go to exit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's where all the kids are. I just remember all those that you, Wonder Lab as well. And especially when I was in Chicago, walking out, and the kids are like, I need this. I need this. <laughs> I need it, looked, it. Yeah, it looked like a moon rock, and it just said, like, other, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what do you need that for? I don't know, but look at it. Like, I need this. And so then, you know. <laughs> Well, there's a Many note. dollars later, you there, walk out with some souvenirs. There's a note on the Wonder Lab um, website when it talks about bringing student groups, and they are advising that you maybe spread out the visits to the uh, gift shop throughout the visit to Wonder Lab, so mm -hmm. that it's not all at the end. And you can't get the kids mm -hmm. out the door because they all need those rocks for yes. sure. So you did a great job reading the website. <laughs> a lot of people don't catch that detail. Yeah, I know. I'm a little yeah. That, that's my Rain Man ability. <laughs> As I read websites and remember everything that's on them. Um, okay, so let's talk about the adult programs and how Deb cannot look like a creeper. Um, so let's talk about Wonder Lab After Dark. 
Yes, great. So as we said, um, a lot of people, when they think of Wonder Lab, think of small children, young children playing, exploring. But our After Dark program is an opportunity for adults 21 and over to come and be in the museum, just them, and get to explore and do hands-on learning, um, enjoy local food, local drinks, and just be able to learn science while they're playing, exploring the museum. And so it appeals to the kid and all of us. So it's the same exhibits that are normally out there. Do you have different hands-on demonstrations or presentations going on, too, that are a little more adult-oriented? Yes, yeah, so each um, After Dark we have has You're not going to make us sing songs about our liver, no, right? No. <laughs> well, I don't know. We're drinking no. beer, drinking about <laughs> liver, right? Guys. <laughs> so each After Dark has a science theme to it. So okay. we will bring in local program partners. Um, we have activities that we do. So we have all the same exhibits that are there, but there are additional activities. Um, the last one we had in October was After Dark Blood Moon, and we had a dance instructor who came in and taught the moonwalk. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we had trivia. We had virtual reality. Um, so some of the things that we have in the museum, but we don't always have out okay. um, that the adults can enjoy as well. And how often do you do those programs? So we're going to have three a year. Okay. Um, we'll have one in February, May, and then we'll have one later in the year. Okay. There you go. February. Yes. Do you know what the theme is for February? Oh, I hope it's a good one. It's, no, it's chocolate, right? <laughs> it's yes. chocolate. Yeah. 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 It's part of Life Design's Week of Chocolate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's a big hit and a lot of fun to come and learn about chocolate and obviously enjoy lots of chocolate. Interesting. And uh, I assume that what's... Is the admission structure different for that event than it is? Yes. So how it's structured is it's $15 for members, okay. um, $18 for non-members. Both of those, if you buy tickets in advance, and $20 at the door. Okay. And where can they get tickets? So you can go to wonderlab.org. Okay. And the tickets actually for After Dark Chocolate and our next After Dark in May are both available right now to buy tickets. What's the one in May about? Um, that one is part of the Grand Paloon Festival, the um, festival that the IU Arts and Humanities Council puts on about the life and work of Kurt Vonnegut. Oh, okay. So we are kind of kicking off that festival and being a part of that and exploring some of the science in some of his works. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a can... mix of literature yeah. and science, that that connection between science fiction and, right. and yeah. science. Do, do the, the, like, we just had a podcast with um, a couple of the librarians from the Monroe County Public Library. Your friendly, what is it? Their, their podcast is called <laughs> Your Friendly Neighborhood Librarian. <laughs> so if they don't know about that event, they probably should because yeah, that would yeah. be good for promoting that because of the, the mix there. Um and uh, and so and what are the hours? How long does that usually go? Yeah, so it lasts from six to nine okay. p.m. and then we usually have an after party at the tap. Nice. And there's also dinner involved, so yes. dinner is included with your ticket yeah. price. That's a really reasonable for eighteen dollars. Yeah, That's really yeah. really reasonable. The food is delicious. Yes, yeah, it is. And there's drink vendors there that you can purchase from, and like we said, lots of. Activities, we try to do trivia, we try to do different things that you might not get to do otherwise. So I'm bringing in a lot of local businesses and program partners as well. And we can watch Karen climb the vine again. I'm not yes. doing that again. <laughs> I'm not doing You did it once. I did it once. I, I did it once. That's plenty for me. <laughs> Last time we had a scavenger hunt where one of the clues was up at the top of the vine. So oh, we had no. To we climb had to climb to the, the vine. vine. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. All right. And then another adult-ish event you've got is Night at the Museum. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we have um, this July will be the 50th anniversary of the moon landing. So we are going to have a special night at the museum for families, adults, children, and appeal to all ages as we celebrate that special event that occurred and explore that topic. Interesting. So are you going to bring back some of the virtual reality and things yes, like we'll that? Yes, that. Um, we'll have all sorts of activities to explore, yes, but the virtual reality was definitely a big, big hit at the Blood Moon, so we'll be bringing that back. And um, so the Night at the Museum event in July, is that also special tickets, special admission? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so our Night at the Museum, it's $10 for non-members, and $8 for members. Okay. 
which is actually less than our ticket price. Right. So, oh, okay. And also probably less than a movie, so <laughs> that's yeah. probably true. And there's food and... That's all included in yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. That's Science. great. And the reason we have that as an all-ages event is because I think intergenerational learning is super amazing, mm -hmm. and I'm looking forward to having people there who are actually alive during the moon yes. landing to be able to... Right. Share with kids how amazing that was. I think we take for granted that we have space travel. Yeah. But that's not something, one, that we should take for granted now, or two, that was the case right. for so mm -hmm. long. So having the generations learn from each other is something yeah. that's amazing about Yeah, I would definitely love to hear stories of people watching it with their families yeah. gathered around and, and just what they were thinking, what they were feeling, and... Uh, you know, yeah, that would be really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and what about uh, teacher programs? Because that's something else that you offer as well. Yeah, so when we're thinking about what things that we have for adults, mm -hmm. we have teacher workshops that we run during the summer. And this summer, for the second year in a row, we're doing a teacher workshop focused on climate and thinking about climate resiliency. So this idea that our climate is changing and what does that mean? for our lives. What mm -hmm. does that mean for weather? What does that mean for agriculture? And how can we be prepared mm -hmm. for environmental change? And so it's a partnership between the Grand Challenge at IU, um, as well as Wonder Lab. Mm -hmm. And we work with professors in different fields from earth and atmospheric science to biology and help teachers have the tools to educate about climate and environmental change in their classrooms. And is it sort of interdisciplinary? I mean, teachers from not just science teachers, but uh, teachers, or is it primarily for science teachers? So this summer for the first time, we're actually opening it up to elementary school teachers. Okay. So elementary teachers are generalists. They're amazing yeah. at everything. Yeah. And science is a small part of what they're doing. And we're structuring the workshop such that they can integrate this teaching about climate and resiliency into their lessons about social studies or their lessons about math or their lessons about literature. You know, how can we get these really important science messages mm -hmm. into all the different things that they have to teach because right. there's so much there. So there'll be elementary workshop this summer as well as a middle school, high school workshop. And that's more focused for yeah. science, science teachers. Nice. teachers. Cool. Yeah. And it's free for teachers. We oh, wow. We actually pay them to come. Talk oh. about deal of the century. <laughs> wow, that's pretty awesome. So there's housing and there's a stipend. So you bring people from all over the, yeah. the state? Last last year we had people as far as um, Gary and Fort Wayne okay. and Evansville all oh, converging wonderful. here, staying in the dorms. Oh my goodness, dorm brave. Life. Yeah, right? Um, <laughs> Yeah. Have fun. Okay. And in the few minutes that we have left, I want to definitely talk about volunteer opportunities because we were talking about that over the break a little bit, that you have volunteers as young as 13 mm -hmm. when they can start helping out. So that can be some great opportunities. And uh, I used to do some volunteering up at the Children's Museum, and that was a really fun experience for me. So what kind of opportunities are at the museum? Yes, yeah, so we have volunteers that are there in the museum every day. We have volunteers that sign up for special events like After Dark, Night at the Museum, some of these that we've been talking about. If there's a certain topic or a certain event that interests you, we have volunteers for that or just need volunteers every day helping with the climber as we were talking <laughs> about. Um, just helping make um, sure everyone is having fun. And so, yeah, it's very, we the volunteers help us so much. <laughs> and um, are there any perks for volunteering? I think you get free admission, right? So Yeah, every time you come, yeah. you also get you know, discounts at the, at the gift store. We have special events where we honor the volunteers. Yeah. They're amazing. Yeah. I love our volunteers. Do you know how many you have? I know that's a random question I didn't prepare no, you for, but... I do. It's about 800 per year. Wow. Mm -hmm. So if you can just imagine yeah. Yeah. the things we can do with our volunteers that we couldn't do if we didn't right. have them. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So many of our events wouldn't be what they are without, mm -hmm. you know, having their help to run the activities and just help us so much with it. I'm just amazed. I mean, I just, I feel like, uh, having, you know, done this research and now spoken with you, I'm have a, I always had respect for Wonder Lab, but mm -hmm. having not been in it, not really knowing much about it now, I'm like impressed with 
how much um, you all have done in a sh really short period of time mm -hmm. and created something that really is world class um, and available, you know, to the people in our community and the deal of century. Yeah, yes. deal of century, mm -hmm. amazing. Are you not feeling like such a creeper? If you're getting I, if Karen goes with me, we will get her in there. <laughs> yes. Then, then I will know. I will definitely we'll have to do a. We'll do it live. We'll do like we a social media. Her. We'll do it live. Yeah. Yes. Why not? Okay. Think, yeah, Rachel's saying yes, it's a go. We should do it. Okay, so we'll do it when we promote the show. Yeah. Okay. I'll bring out a cockroach for DJ. When, when, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. And uh, yeah, and we'll have to show up. Probably the same one that I was scared of like 20 years ago. Right? <laughs> Sorry. Do they, they probably have a really ago. long lifespan, so. They only live five years. Okay, then oh, there's it's your the ancestor okay. of no. <laughs> it's relative. It'll recognize it. Yeah, exactly. Grandchild. Cockroaches never forget, right? No. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. It's uh, been really interesting for me and uh, giving me something new to try out. So we encourage everyone, wonderlab.org is the website, as you can tell from what I said. There's a lot of information there. Um, and uh, and then just go in and, and feel free and ask questions because they're scientists, and so they're all about asking questions, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Awesome. All right, thanks for tuning in, and we'll be back with another episode of At Home in Bloomington. Got a show idea? I'd love to hear it. And be sure to contact me for all your real estate needs and questions, too. You can email me at deb at realrealestatetoday.com. And follow me on Facebook at Deb Tomorrow Realtor. To contact Karen Rastel for all your mortgage needs, call 812-606-7653 or log on to ruoff.com and go to the Bloomington Center. Thanks to all the Bloomington people who make production of At Home in Bloomington possible. Special thanks to superstar producer Rachel D. Gregorio, digital guru Cynthia Hogan at Monster Digital Marketing for website design and hosting, and video genius Wes Lasher in the production house for engineering the show.